to your brainstem, which is kind of like the like the sleeping lizard in your dungeon. <laughs> So how are you doing today? Um, I'm good. <laughs> it's always good to pause for mindfulness because like, then you realize, okay, I need this. Yes. <laughs> Who else can use some mindfulness right now? Me, me, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a stressful week. So I returned back to work mm. and it's been interesting. I don't have a ton of work to do yet, but it'll roll in, it'll trickle in, and then it'll become really, really busy, hopefully. You work best when it's busy. I do. And when it's not, yeah. I work like a snail. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know about ourselves that way. Yes, totally. So Karen, can you introduce yourself to everyone? And I will start by saying I met Karen through our amazing single mom tribe that we're part of. It's been so so fun getting to know you through that space and I would love for you to chat a little bit about who you are what you do and then we'll get right into it okay I'm happy to yeah likewise Tina it's been really fun to get to know you too I feel like we've known each other forever even though it's only been a few months yes. that's what that space does right yeah yeah so connecting. So I, a hummingbird by nature, I love connecting up amazing resources with people looking to bring more, more consciousness, more mindfulness, more ability to really create the life you dream of, like stepping into our dreams. That's all about my work in the world. So I've been a coach and a mentor, create programs and workshops and projects and courses to support people into that deeper soul purpose expression and creation in the world. I've often worked with families to create that in their family lives through conscious parenting, mindful parenting. Yeah, it's really fun to circle back to this topic of mindfulness because I feel like this time on the planet is really calling us to epic mastery of mindfulness. Thanks for creating the space for this deeper dive into that. Too. Yes, thank you for joining us. So, you know, too, a lot of the ladies in here are struggling with their weight, they're struggling with mm -hmm. healthy eating habits, and just the day to day not wanting to do the work and it becoming very difficult at times. Yeah. And I think when I get lost, I'm not always being mindful and like really utilizing the skills that I have. Yeah. We all have capacity and I think it's like a superpower. I really consider it one of my superpowers to be mindful, which is simply as to become self-aware in the moment, right? To become present to this moment. When I work with kids, I'll ask them, what time is it? And the mindful answer is now. It's always now. And there's a lot of other answers to that, but now is like the nutshell of, okay, let's bring our attention to now then. If that's the time, then I wanna be here for it. And then the other question is, where am I? And the mindful answer is here. And that's actually truly what we always have is we have right now and we have right here. And when I can bring my attention to what is going through my, my mind and my emotional body and my physical body, right here and right now, that can give me the opportunity to step back from whatever habit or behavior or impulse I have and be responsive instead of reactive, right? So my impulse is kind of a reaction, like I wanna open the fridge and get that thing out of there and I wanna start <laughs> devouring it. But when I, <laughs> yeah. But when I get present and I can tune in, I can see that, okay, so my thoughts are spinning, my emotions are heightened, I feel actually a little tense, and my physical body is a little tight, or like whatever the data is, right? And then I can, I can ask those questions of like, what do I really need in this moment? Not what does my mind want, not what my emotions want, but what do I, the whole system, really need? need and will be best served by in this moment even just a breath you know from that place of like checking in you know it was funny because tina as i was thinking about the topic i was remembering my first my first time my first time with mindfulness i didn't recognize it at the time but i was in fifth grade and my teacher had a jar of honey and he gave us this activity where we each had a toothpick and he walked around the whole room the whole classroom and we got to dip our toothpick in and twirl a little honey and then sit with it you know kind of like hold it until everybody had their honey 
and then taste it. And the splash of sweetness that landed on my tongue was so intense. And I had never had that mindful of a moment before that I remembered, you know, not with food. Yeah. That's amazing that your fifth and grade teacher did that for you. I know. He was like a total pioneer because this is a long time. I was in fifth grade a really long time ago. I'm over 50 right now. So he was a pioneer. Mr. G. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. G. But it was like that sweetness was so rich. And it like not only was on my tongue, it was on my whole body because I had been anticipating it. I'd been so present from the moment of twirling it. I'd been in that here now moment. I know like I've definitely had addictions to sugar in the past. And I know that feeling of like needing to open that bar of chocolate, wanting to devour it, not being able to slow down. And I also know the experience of the honey, you know? And what a lot of times what we're truly wanting is just more sweetness. It's not the sugar. Like my body might have this habitual need for the sugar, but what ultimately the whole of me is really wanting is maybe just more sweetness in my life, more pleasure, more joy. And I can give that to myself in lots of ways without the pint of ice cream yeah and you mentioned though also just talking about the honey and letting it kind of like sit on your tongue which you know like I try to practice as much as possible and I and I mm. teach others in terms of being able to just sit there with your food and like really enjoy each step of the moment and and savor every everything that you're tasting on your taste buds while you're eating yeah it's so much we're just always in the go and on the move it's so true and that we don't give a lot of focus or attention on how to just eat mindfully and and what you mm -hmm. just shared about honey is is exactly what kind of being a little bit more mindful and eating mindfully means and just being there being present and in awareness with what what is going on and that anticipation that that taste of the savory feeling or the texture of whatever you're eating and then yeah. being there with it yeah yeah and it's so much better right when we do remember to do that and that's like a reminder for every single person because it's a challenge it's so much better it's so much pleasurable we appreciate it and we enjoy it i'm sure that our bodies absorb it much better you probably have all of those facts it's much healthier for us the ability to be present with every bite it gives us the ability to really take charge of our experience instead of just like let me fuel myself and down this meal let me decide mm -hmm. before i even take the first bite what do I want to experience here? Yes. And that really shifts us. We always have the opportunity to step off of that train track of life that can feel like it's just slowing us maybe faster than we, we want to be. Um, we get to decide. We get to determine the pace. What you just spoke to about being conscious with, with each bite, just sitting with our plates and maybe even offering gratitude at the beginning, slowing down, it's... Um, it allows us to create ritual around our daily actions. I was just thinking this morning when I was making my tea, the way I do it can increase my ability to be even that much more mindful and appreciative. So I like open up my little jar of loose leaf tea and I can pause to smell it, you know? That's super nice, super sweet. Like that gives me like a rush of appreciation and maybe like feel the steam of the hot water as I pour it. Like all of those little things that we hardly ever pause for can really call us into being more co-creative with life and more present. What would you say to somebody who's like struggling, like that just really mm -hmm. has never taken the moment? I'm thinking back to those early 20s when I was really not even able to understand what being mindful was or how to obtain that. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? You know, maybe a little analogy of how it works in the body could help understand and activate the ability to um, or the interest in activating that presence so if we think about your whole body I like to think of it like your kingdom your whole system is like the kingdom of you right not just your physical but your mental emotional physical body it's your kingdom and then maybe like the castle is your brain right and so in the castle we have these different sections and we have a queen the qu your queen, if you're masculine, you can have your king. But your queen is your prefrontal cortex, which is the, the wise one, the wise part of the brain that's like making all the smart choices. They have the 
ecosystem view of the whole kingdom. They, they're keeping tabs on what's happening and they're super smart and wise. And then we have the center part of the brain, which is like the limbic region. And inside the limbic region is, the, the, the limbic region is where all of your emotional social connections happen. And then in the center of that part of the brain is the amygdala, which is like the guard of the tower. You know, it's just kind of constantly scanning the horizon for any signs of danger. The amygdala is always watching. And when there is any sign of danger, they start to like send out signals to the rest of your brainstem, which is kind of like the like the sleeping lizard in your dungeon. <laughs> the brainstem, and it's like, oh, there's danger. But the lizard has no ability to determine if the danger is, you know, there's barbarians coming over the hill. Or we read an article that was disturbing. Mm -hmm. Both have the potential to wake up the, the sleeping lizard, and the sleeping lizard is what gets the whole, sends out the messages to the entire kingdom to get ready to fight or run away or hide under the blankets, right? And so the kingdom is gonna respond to those messages however they're sent, whether it's real physical danger or a perception of danger or a sense of emotional upset. Yeah. When we activate our ability to develop mindfulness and presence and the ability to pause and assess the signals that are happening in our system, and respond differently, that's where we get to take charge of that amygdala response. We actually have the capacity to nix that response or shift that response so that the lizard doesn't wake up, right? <laughs> to put the lizard back to sleep. We can do this. And mindfulness is, a, is one way we can do this. And so the queen, like when the when the lizard wakes up, the queen goes to sleep. Like there's, there's no access to her wise counsel when the lizard is in charge. It's like, oh no. There's too much danger, it's too late for that. I need to take charge, that's what the lizard would say. When we take charge of our response and we bring in mindfulness practices, for example, we can put the lizard back to sleep and the queen, we can activate that messaging to the queen and she can make the wise choice. So it's really stepping into our queenship. Yeah. <laughs> when we step into our presence and our mindful presence. I hope that might be helpful as like inspiration to understand what's going on in your body. If the lizard is in charge, it's like we're victim to that response in our body. It's like our body has responses that further along we go and we all know the stress response in our body, right? It's like we, ca we can't really think straight. We can't make smart choices. We're no we, don't we don't have access to the queen. So of course we gotta either just like get ready to fight we gotta go hide. We're not, we, we are only taking in signs of danger. We are not taking in any other data. And that's where we get into trouble with like eating all the cookies in the jar, you know? And it's like, dang, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> it's because our queen was asleep, right? Yeah. We weren't present to what we were choosing to do because it didn't feel like a choice. But, you know, activating mindfulness gives us the actual choice, the freedom. And that really allows us to be the creator of our experience as opposed to the victim of our craving. Yeah, Andrea says <laughs> that she likes the idea of stepping into our queenship. And you know what? I think that's the perfect thing when you're when you're kind of at that point where you kind of know, you know, like there's that like teetering, there's like this little teeter of like, I'm opening the fridge, right? I'm in awareness that I'm doing this. The word that needs to yeah. maybe come out is like queenship. <laughs> like <laughs> maybe that's the word. Or, Long live the yes. queen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or keep that queen dragon in the dungeon. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that analogy. Experience of the different responses if you want to try. Yes. Let's go for it.